Here on BBC One, Bob turns up a golden nugget in Pilgrim's Rest. get the rough end of the stick. I mean, it's women who end up doing the cleaning and it's women who end up doing the cooking and it's not right. Yes, it's not right. For men are the better cooks. <laughs> but I'm not sexist about this. For I say also, women are the better cleaners. I'm going to smack him one day. Yeah, it's well out of order, Didier. My sister's never cleaned a thing in her life. <laughs> Excuse me. Why I was living with Duncan, I knew all about cleaning. I knew all about the slavery of housework. You had a maid. Yes, and I know how hard she slaved. I've got a woman who does, only she doesn't. She did, but she doesn't. So I'm going to get a woman who does, who does. You see, it would be wrong of me to clean here, Bob. I mean, you have your routine. I couldn't possibly upset it. You could try. No. I watch you every morning opening up, wiping the tables, filling the sugar bowls, sniffing the milk. <laughs> People set their watches by your routine. You mean it's boring? Of course it's not boring. You enjoy it. Anyone else would find it boring, certainly, but that's what makes you special. <laughs> Boring. That's why I joined the police force, Bob. <laughs> so that my life would never be boring. Mm, heaven forbid. You never know what's going to happen next in this job. One minute you're sitting here sipping a coffee, and the next second you're ordering a tea cake to go with it. <laughs> why can't we do something? All in good time, Quintin. All in good time. You know my motto. Uh. Let the crime come to you. Exactly. <laughs> and there's so much of it about these days, we're bound to get some eventually. <laughs> My life isn't boring. And do you know why? It's because I never know who's going to come through that door. Morning, Ronnie. Morning, Bob. <laughs> what can I get you? What, you always get me? Coffee and a donut. Wouldn't you like something different this morning? Bob is bored. He wants things to be different. In that case, I'll have my coffee hot today. <laughs> One coffee and a donut it is, then. Hey, Bob. Guess what I've got? Athlete's foot. You're gonna love this. They're playing Folkestone tonight, and I can let you have two tickets for 40 quid. Last leg of the Can't Stop tour. Who? Status quo. Oh, Ronnie, I'm bored, not suicidal. Oh, come on, Bob. <laughs> Your sort of band. You used to roadie for them in the 80s, didn't you? Yeah, did the farewell tour in 84. And the, uh, hello, we're back again tour in, uh, 85. <laughs> Status quo are for middle-aged losers, Ronnie. Try my sister. <laughs> oh, no. What's he trying to flog now? Not more health insurance. No, that health care plan was well decent. It offered comprehensive, private medical care in a top-quality hospital. Yes, in Prague. <laughs> Very convenient. So what's this? Two tickets for status quo. No, afraid I have a dinner engagement. Besides, I just think it's more in Bob's line. No. Nah. Now, Bob said they were for middle-aged losers. <laughs> words nerve you've got a bloody spring to mind listen while you are sitting here tonight in the grip of emmerdale i shall be being wined and dined by the chairman of the tennis club so who's the middle-aged loser hmm? sounds like he is <laughs> so you're back out on the pool again are you don't be disgusting malcolm is a gentleman he has perfect manners Beautifully groomed. His nails are immaculate. Oh, spiffing. You tell a lot from a man's nails. Yeah. Annabel Lecter had immaculate nails. He'd have given you a few surprises. <laughs> morning, Bob. Morning, Tilly. Hi, Pammy. <laughs> hey, 
You're a bit early. You're not due until 12. Yeah, I thought I'd come in early. Then I could be away by lunchtime. Yeah. <laughs> lunchtime does tend to be one of our busier times, this being a restaurant. Yeah, I know. It's just that I've got a lunchtime tutorial. You don't mind, do you? No, no, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> Could you give this to Ronnie on the way through, please? OK. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Bye. <laughs> you are besotted, you know. You dribble whenever you see her. Do not. You do. Don't. Yes, you do. Don't. You do. Don't. You do. Don't. Ronnie's in a good mood. He's just sold Didier two tickets to see Status Quo. <laughs> status Quo, eh? <laughs> Yeah, they're amazing, aren't they? Yeah, they are amazing, yeah. <laughs> they're incredible. Yeah, they were my mum's favourite. She was always playing them when I was growing up. Yeah, because uh, I used to roadie for the quo in the 80s, you know? You didn't? Yeah. Oh, I must tell my mum. Yeah, I used to lug all the gear around, do the sound check, and chew and chew. Oh, you know? wow! <laughs> Set up the drums, tune the guitars. And if mm. one of them didn't turn up at the gig, I'd play it for them. <gasps> Not often, obviously, you know, just once a week or so, you know? It'd be such a laugh to see them. Would it? Because uh, we could probably go tonight if you like. Really? Yeah, could lay me hands on a couple of tickets like that. Oh, that would be fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you've got like a bit of dribble on your chin. <laughs> well, we can't sit in the cafe all day. Thank goodness. Bye, Bob. Yes, I'm still here. What do you mean, sold out? It's a status quo concert. Huge demand. Who from? Help the aged. Everything all right, Bob? No. I promised Pam I'd take her to the status quo concert and all the tickets have sold out. Yeah, they didn't have many left when I rang. <laughs> you? Oh, yes. An opportunity to relive my tempestuous youth. Rocking all over the <laughs> Yes, I'm going with my mates from the station. Plus Quintin. Yeah, I'm looking forward to an off-duty evening with my fellow professionals. Plus Drew. So good to see male bonding at work. Your first date. Oh, you must be so excited. Well, yes. I'm a bit nervous, too. Mm. Oh, I love first dates. That first meal, first touch. Ah, oh, the first kiss. You don't think he's going to kiss me? On a first date? <laughs> oh, Pam, I haven't kissed a man in 18 years. Well, except Duncan. I haven't kissed him in five. <laughs> it's like riding a bike. I'll come back to you. Well, I can't ride a bike. <laughs> I tried it once and I was sick. You'll be fine. Now, what are you wearing? I thought my black cocktail dress. Perfect. And underneath? Underneath? Yeah, something sexy. I haven't got anything sexy. My age, I have to wear things that stop my bottom hitting the floor. <laughs> anyway, he's not going to see underneath. <laughs> That's what you say now. <laughs> now, just in case, right, I got you these. There's only three, but I think that should be enough. Oh, Pamela! Pamela, I do not need these. What, do you think he'll have his own? No! <laughs> We're not going to go that far. Oh, you can't be sure. I mean, you know what it's like when you get carried away on a tide of sexual passion? No. <laughs> oh, it's uncontrollable. Happened to me once, and, like, neither of us, you know, had anything, so we couldn't do it. I tell you, Tilly, it was the worst night of my life. Tough life. <laughs> thanks. But no thanks. Nearly. Hey. Ronnie, have you seen Diddy, eh? Oh, you missed him, mate. He's gone. With them tickets, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, what a result, eh? Oh, yes, brilliant. Diddy who knows nothing at all about rock music. Why would he want to go and see Status Quo? Probably because I told him they're like Abba. <laughs> like <laughs> Abba? <laughs> a nice donut. Really moist. <laughs> My partner would like yet another cup of coffee, please, Bob. Oh, the busy day continues, eh, Quint? NYPD Blue's got nothing on you two. <laughs> Oh, yes. Yes, action at last! Um, shush, everyone, please. <clears throat> Bravo 1693, receiving. Come in, please, over. Bravo 1693, could I have a tea cake with my coffee? Over. <laughs> and, um, one tea cake, please, Bob. I'll bring it over. Over. <laughs> Be 
only chance with Pam blown. I'll tell you what. Pretend you've got the tickets, right? Right. And then when you see her tonight, tell her someone mugged you for them. Someone's mugged me for two status quo tickets. <laughs> Very likely, Ron. Yeah, she'll feel so sorry for you. You'll have her in bed within an hour. Wallop. <laughs> you really respect women, don't you? Yeah, I do. Especially blondes. <laughs> two coffees, please, babe, when you're ready. Babe? <laughs> I don't believe it. Nugget! Ah! Well, good mate Nugget from a roadie days. And there was me thinking he was your old headmaster. <laughs> this is Dagger. Dagger, this is my very good friend Spliff. <laughs> How you doing, man? Yeah. So, you still with a quote in? Yeah, yeah. Hey, you've got to come to gig tonight. I'll put you on the guest list, oh, yeah? great. Perfect. Oh, status quo. How trendy of you, Bob. This is my sister Tilly. <laughs> Tilly! How you doing, Bob? Thank you. Charmed, I'm sure. So, you were on the road with Bob? Yeah, yeah, we did 14 tours together. Yeah. I'll tell you what. This guy was the greatest laugh ever. Ah, no, you yeah. were, man, you <laughs> were. Hey, hey. Remember that time Keith Moon glued your buttocks together? <laughs> what a laugh that was! Yeah, 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 it was, yeah. And when Alice Cooper covered that slug in pink dye, told you it was turkey still, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that Iron Maiden, eh? Remember what they did to you? No. Yeah, of course you do. <laughs> they only carbonated their urine and told him it was Russian lager. <laughs> <laughs> they drank two pints! <laughs> oh, those were the days, a eh, split. <laughs> well, I'll leave you to reminisce about your other triumphs. So, did you see anything of Jimmy? Jimmy Royce? Jimmy's gone, man. Gone? We had a lot of good times together. You and me and Jimmy. Wild times, man. Jimmy was the wildest of them all. And then, one day he just... bought a greengrocer's shop. <laughs> so he's not dead, then? <laughs> Might as well be. <laughs> he had the freedom of the open road, man. All the booze and the drugs and... Oh, such a waste. Yeah, right, yeah. You wimped out, man. Yeah, pathetic. <laughs> so, what you up to, man? Me? Oh, uh, I don't know, I'm just still bumming around. I haven't settled down on me. Yeah. <laughs> Keep the spirit, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is your sister's place, eh? Yeah, yeah, it's all hers, everything, the lot, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I just, you know, I bum in. Bum a coffee, bum out again. It's a dump. Yeah, it is, yeah, yeah. She likes it that way. Coming up to lunchtime, Spliff. Pamela's gone off duty. Yeah? So? So? Your customer's over there. I'm not going to take their order, and I'm not going to serve them, so don't think I am. <laughs> She's very weird. People come in here, she just ignores them. <laughs> Bob, you are not going in that. It's in honor of the old days. It's indecent. And have I shrunk? Have you suddenly got taller? Oh, no. <laughs> They're just boots. They're stilts. And those trousers, you look like a nerd. Wear something normal. <laughs> so, suppose you'll be going back to his place afterwards, will you? No, oh, I shouldn't think so. Be coming straight back here, I should think. Well, I hope you're not going to make a lot of noise. You'll put me and Pam right off with you yelping and moaning. Yelping <laughs> and moaning? Yeah, like that time when Mum and Dad went out that night and you brought back that bloke, Philip. Yeah, I was only about nine at the time, and there I was, lying in bed, your next door, moaning, Oh, God! Oh, God! And the bed's banging against the wall, and he's wheezing like he's having an asthma attack. He was having an asthma attack. <laughs> oh. I mean, that's why I was yelling and banging. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. 
Hope you had better luck this time. <laughs> Take an inhaler. <laughs> and I presume you've checked that Malcolm's not gay? Gay? Malcolm? Oh, don't be so silly, Bob. Of course he's not gay. Well, your husband was. Took you 18 years to find that out. <laughs> That's quite different. Look, I'm just trying to save you and Malcolm a bit of time. Just have to ask him a couple of subtle questions, like, uh... Is he a fan of Judy Garland? <laughs> Does he sleep with men? Thanks for the advice, Bob. And I hope you have a good time with Pam. Thanks. You still got your deformity? Deformity? You know, that warty thing on your bum. Not a warty thing, it's a birthmark. Oh, you have still got it then, oh dear. You can hardly see it. You can hardly miss it. Pam sees that, she'll run a mile. Oh, that'll be him. I just don't want your evening to end in disaster. Thanks. The same to you. Hope he's gay and asthmatic. <laughs> Fun. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait to read them after. Yeah, well, we won't stay long. We'll just pop in and have a quick drink, and then we'll get off to, um... wherever. Oh, oh you want to spend some time with them, Bob? I mean, you used to work with them. You used to play with them. Yeah, well... You played with status quo? Yeah. He used to be their roadie. And if one of them didn't turn up, he used to do the concert instead, didn't you, Bob? Ah, uh, Quentin! Over here, mate. Bob, how are you? How good to see you. So you're dressed for the occasion? Oh, thank you, Bob. Not this occasion, obviously. You look very smart, Quentin. Well, it's an officer's duty to look smart, Pamela, in or out of uniform. Evening, Quentin. Good evening, Drew. Well, we have an example. Good God. We're back there. But I warn you, Quentin, Chief Inspector Buckle is not a nappy man. <laughs> I'm not surprised. He had his navel pierced this afternoon. <laughs> Turn septic. Do I have to sit with you? You could always go in with Diddy, eh? Oh, good idea. Oh, like Abba, Ronnie said. <laughs> so what about the only one dressed like this? Oh, I thought you were bringing someone with you, Didier. She ran away. <laughs> Come on, Quentin. Didier. See you later. You look nice. Thanks. You look absolutely... nice, too. I've got the greatest tits. <laughs> yeah, they're lovely. I thought I might get them out after. <laughs> you know, so the band can sign them? And then I could show them to my mum. <laughs> oh, yeah, great idea, yeah, great. <laughs> I can't say I know much about her. I think I saw The Wizard of Oz when I was a child, but that's the, you know, <laughs> that's the only Garland film I've seen. <laughs> why, why do you ask? Oh, no reason. I just love her voice, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, it's a very nice place. Have you been here before? No, no, never. In fact, I, uh, I haven't been out much at all since uh, Margaret died. Oh, that must have been terrible for you. Yes. It, to be honest, you're the first dinner companion I've had of the opposite. Uh, what's it? You <laughs> know what I mean. I thought I was rather beyond the old dating business. Oh, so did I. Terribly rusty, I'm afraid. Oh, you probably just need your parts oiling. <laughs> what? Oh, I mean, a glass of wine and you'll be all right. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Mm. <laughs> well, um, shall we order some food? Good idea. Yes. Good idea, indeed. <laughs> I'm going to have to use my glasses. It's no good pretending at my age. Still, women don't these days, do they? They are what they are, they say what they want, and they go for it. <laughs> You men know what you're in for. <laughs> Five courses. 
I don't know how many you can get through. <laughs> Three is usually my limit. Are you ready to order, sir? Uh, uh, no. <laughs> Mind you, I do have an insatiable appetite once I get going. <laughs> I went out with some Lebanese businessmen once, and do you know we got through 15? <laughs> Mind you. The Lebanese certainly know how to put it away. <laughs> and some of them are enormous. <laughs> Quite frankly, I could hardly stand afterwards, let alone walk. Would you excuse me? I'm afraid I'm feeling rather faint, uh, suddenly. Oh, can I... No, no, no. Are you making any coffee? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Spilled some beer on him last night. So, what time did you get in? Ten past eight. <laughs> Dirty stop out. Bloody half past now. No, no, ten past eight last night. It was a disaster. We didn't even eat any dinner. We ordered some wine, we looked at the menu, talked about Judy Garland, then he left, vanished. I sat there for half an hour, worked my way through seven crostini and a bottle of Chianti, and then came home and passed up. So when you're seeing him again? Oh, very droll. What about you and Pam? Oh, it's a total disaster. I did warn you about that boil. It's not a boil, it's a birthmark. Anyway, she didn't get to see it, she didn't even get back here. Why? What happened? Well, <clears throat> I left her when I went to say goodbye to the roadies. And they persuaded me to have a pint. Vodka, I think it was. <laughs> and it went a bit hazy. You fool, Bob. You're so easily led. Yeah, I know. Oh. It was just like the old days. <laughs> oh, God. That's it. So out of it. Oh. I think we ended up trashing some place or other. It wasn't this place, was it? <laughs> no, I think it was actually, yeah. Morning, Tilly. Morning. Morning, Bob. Good gig last night, wasn't it? Really kicking. Did you? I'll have a coffee, please. Right. Is there anything I can get you, Quentin? Is there anything I can get you, Quentin? It appears we stood Quintin a little too close to one of the loudspeakers. He should get his earring back in a couple of days. <laughs> Don't hear a word we're saying. Can you, Constable Pompous Arse? <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't hear a word. <laughs> Think I might enjoy today. You told me they like Abba. No, 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 I told you they like Abba. They're oh. very big fans. Morning, Ronnie. Morning, Bjorn. It's a language thing. And so we have this misunderstanding because I'm French and you are merde. Exactly. Uh, Usual please, Bob. Um, I don't know if anybody's noticed, but the place is looking a teeny bit different this morning. Yeah, see that. Yeah, well, that Bob, one. I can't help noticing the cafe is looking different this morning. <laughs> yeah, well, that's because I got really wrecked last night and trashed the place. Oh, dear. Well, yeah. how did it get like this, Bob? <laughs> So, I'm sorry to let you down, lads, but if you could bear with me, I'll clean up. Fair and... enough, Bob. We'll go in the kitchen. You can serve us in there. Drew, it's chaos in here. Let's go in the kitchen while Bob sorts it out. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Morning, Tilly. Morning, Pamela. Yeah. 
Morning, Pam. Um, about last night. I shouldn't have left you there like that. I'm very, very sorry. I hope you can forgive me, because... <laughs> Take that as a no, then. <laughs> oh, what have I done? I've blown all my chances with Pam. I'll bring my own cat. Yeah, not exactly a triumphant night for either of us. Still, look on the bright side. It's over. Yeah. Oh, man, how you doing? <laughs> you ready to roll? Ready to roll? What does he mean, ready to roll? Uh, I think I might have promised to go out on the road with him again. Don't be ridiculous. You've got a cafe to run. I know that. Well, then tell him. I can't. Don't ask me why. I just can't. Now, get and I go back a long way. I've spent the best years of my life with that man. It's possibly the saddest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> come on, man. Yeah, come on, Spliff. Yeah, just a minute, lads. What am I going to do? You're going to be a man, Bob. Oh. Yes, you're going to stand up, walk tall, and tell them you can't go. And if you do, I'll have a word with Pam, put in a good word for you. And remember, Bob, the truth is always best. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. That's, um, that, that's, uh... Sorry, lads. Can't come with you. Why not? Yeah. Not wimping out, are you? No, no. Uh... The fact is that, um, I've got to look after the... I've got to look after my sister. <laughs> She's insane. <laughs> Gaga. <laughs> Gaga? What do you mean? Well, to be more specific, she's a sex addict. <laughs> sex addict. Well, she gets her clutches on some man, he's at it. <laughs> yeah. Last night she was out with this bloke and he had to do a runner during dinner. <laughs> She's put five blokes in hospital. One of them's still there. <laughs> She's smiling at us. <laughs> yeah. I'm afraid she likes you, Nug. How are you getting on, Bob? All right, lads. Oh, uh, we'll be going then. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was quick. Yeah. They were very understanding. You see. Well done, Bob. Do you know, sometimes I'm quite proud of my little brother. <laughs> so, uh, you'll explain to Pam, will you? Yes, I will. Right. And you and Malcolm, if there's anything I can do. I'm sure it's just a little misunderstanding. Oh. We're both members of the same tennis club. We're bound to run into each other sooner or later. I met a couple of nymphos in my time. Never had a sex addict. Yeah, she's one scary woman at Tilly. Guy last night was lucky to get out alive. 